My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm downtown Moscow, standing next to the walls that surround an ancient city of Moscow called Kitai Gorod. These massive walls are very ancient. They were built between 1535 and 1538 at the order of Ivan the Terrible's mother. She was also his regent, but she gave the order for these walls to be built to protect the people who lived in this region and to make sure outsiders couldn't get on the inside. And if necessary, these walls could be used to keep the people on the inside trapped so they couldn't get out. This was actually a fortress or what we might call a stronghold. Big walls, thick walls, 14 towers. Wow, these walls were simply enormous. I came here today because today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to know if a person has a stronghold in his or her life. Listen to what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse four. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Then he identifies what a stronghold is, casting down imaginations. A stronghold is when you have some kind of a lying imagination or a lying emotion that has trapped you on the inside, you become a prisoner to a false belief about yourself. And in fact, that false belief is so secure that even when people try to talk to you and tell you that you're wrong, you can't hear them, they can't penetrate you because those walls are so thick. How do you know if a person has a stronghold? How do you know if you have a stronghold? Today we're going to see the signs that a person has a stronghold and see what they can do to be set free. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Thank you for letting me come right into your space today. today I'm going to talk to you about how to bring every thought into captivity. Do you ever feel like your mind is just running wild and you cannot control your thoughts? You can control your thoughts. In fact, the Bible says you can bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What does that mean and how do you do it? That's what I'm going to help you with today. It's going to be great. But I'm offering you my series, which is called Pulling Down Strongholds. It's five parts. It comes in multiple formats. This is a series, my friend, that you need to hear and hear and hear and hear and hear. Everyone at some point in their life deals with a mental stronghold or a vain imagination. You need to know how to assault it, get rid of it so you're free of it. And that's what this series is about. It will really help you. Order your copy today and remember that it comes with a study guide that is remarkable. My friend, these study guides are such treasures. All the hours I put into research about the Greek words and the historical background to texts, it's all in these study guides. All you have to do is open it and enjoy the treasures that are in these guides. And if you go to our website, you'll find that we have all kinds of study guides on a myriad of subjects. They're great for personal study, to share with a friend. They are great for Bible study or a home group. So go there and look them up. And right now we're also offering you my book called Dress to Kill. I was just looking at this book before I sat in the chair today to do the program. This book is remarkable and God has been using it around the world for years and years and years. In fact, if you have a copy of this, would you just write to me and tell me what you think of it, how it has impacted your life? And if you don't have a copy, you need to order your copy today. You can order it by going online. It is nearly 500 pages about spiritual warfare and spiritual armor. I deal with every piece of spiritual weaponry which God has given to you and to every believer. I deal with the power of God. What does the Bible mean when it says we wrestle with principalities and powers, the wiles, the devices, the deception of the devil, how to be strong in the Lord? I mean, this chapter, page by page by page, is just loaded and... It has pictures, and the pictures are amazing. They are real historical renderings of what Roman weaponry looked like, which helps us to understand 
what the Bible's talking about when it talks about our weapons of warfare, because this was the background to what Paul was alluding to when he wrote about spiritual weapons. Anyway, order your copy today. And for those who become partners, we always send you a package of books as our way of saying thank you for joining our partner family. I was thinking about you this morning when I was praying for you. The Bible tells us in the Great Commission, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, go into all the world and teach all nations. You know, when you hear the charge to go into all the world, that sounds so big. But when you become a partner right from the privacy of your home, without ever leaving your living room by going online or sending a contribution, you can go into all the world with the teaching of the Bible. That is amazing to me. And the scripture says, that we're to go into all the world. The Greek says, go and keep on going, which means we're not to do this once. This is something we are to do regularly. Either you go or you help those who are going to go. And when you become a partner, you help us. You literally join forces with us. It is a kingdom job to take the teaching of the Bible into all the world. And through this program, we are literally touching people all over the planet and right from your home. It's amazing to me. It is so amazing. Right from your home, you can do something that will change another person's life. And when you become a partner, you help us take the water of God's word to those that are thirsty for truth. Thank you. And if you're already a partner, I want to say thank you, partner. Together, we're obeying the Lord step by step, and we're helping people with the teaching of the Bible. Thank you so much. Hey, but I want you to grab your Bible and I want you to open them to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And today I'm going to talk to you about bringing every thought into captivity. But we're going to begin again today in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, where Paul says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And in this verse, Paul refers to weapons. God has given us weapons. We need to know how to use them. Those weapons are described in Ephesians chapter 6. For example, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, Paul says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. You say, what is that? Is that really a weapon? Oh, yes. In fact, having your loins girt about with truth, the loin belt of truth, it is your most important weapon. I explain the reason why in my book, Dress to Kill, which is another reason why you need to have this book. But then he says, having on the breastplate of righteousness. In this one verse, we have two weapons. Then when you come to Ephesians 6, verse 15, he says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It sounds like they're very peaceful shoes, but actually when you study the Greek text and Roman history, you find out they were killer shoes. If you use these shoes right, you could crush your enemy. You'll have a lot of peace if you use them effectively, and that's why they're called shoes of peace. I discuss that in Dress to Kill. Then you come to verse 16, where Paul says, above all, by the way, the Greek doesn't say above all, it says out in front of all. It doesn't mean the shield of faith is more important than anything else. It describes the position of faith. Faith is to be out front, above all, or you could translate it in the front, covering all, the shield of faith. And if you're using your shield of faith effectively, the verse says, wherewith you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Then you come to verse 17, where we find two more weapons and the helmet of salvation. Now we're talking about having our thoughts protected, taking captive every thought. But the truth is, if you have on the helmet of salvation, the devil will never be able to penetrate your mind because your mind will be protected. But you need to know what is the helmet of salvation. And there also is the sword of the spirit. So there's two more weapons in that verse. But in Roman weaponry, there really were seven pieces of weaponry. And if you study this list, it looks like one piece is missing. The final piece would be the lance. But the lance is there. The lance is in verse 18, where Paul writes, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. I call this the lance 
of intercession. In this text, we have what the Bible calls the panoplion of God, the whole armor of God, which means God has left nothing out God has given us everything we need to make sure we're covered from head to toe, from side to side, front and back. We have all the weaponry we need to deal with the enemy. But wait, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 goes on to say, for the weapons of our warfare. We've already seen that this word warfare is the Greek word strateia. The word strateia is the word for a well-planned attack. It is derived from a word which depicts strategic warfare. So not only does God give us weaponry, if we'll open our ears and listen, the Holy Spirit will give us a strategy about how to use that weaponry and how to wage an assault. It includes the line of attack, the methods to be used in an attack, and the route chosen to carry out, listen to this, a debilitating assault. You're equipped to wage a debilitating assault against anything that is against you. A debilitating assault against wrong thoughts, strongholds, and imaginations in the mind. And in fact, the verse goes on to say, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The word carnal, the Greek word sarkikos, which literally means they're not fleshly, they're not natural. Whatever is derived from the fleshly, natural, or material world. And when I think of this, my mind goes to 1 Samuel chapter 17. And in 1 Samuel chapter 17, the Bible tells us that David decided that he would arise and he would go fight Goliath and he would kill Goliath. No one else was dealing with Goliath. And in fact, the truth is all the men of Israel had a mental stronghold about Goliath. They listened to what Goliath said. And because they heard his words, and that's what the Bible says over and over in 1 Samuel Chapter 17, it says they heard his words and they were afraid. They were listening to the lies of the enemy and those lies paralyzed them. They were fearful. They didn't move. It's like these mighty men of Israel were suddenly behind mental bars. They were terrified of Goliath because they were listening to him. But when David heard him, David said, I will arise and I will take care of this giant that has defied God and the armies of the living God. And he went to King Saul and said, I'm going to go and I'm going to take down this Goliath. And the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 38, and Saul, that's King Saul, armed David with his armor. And he put a helmet of brass upon his head and he armed him with a coat of mail and David girded his sword upon his armor and he essayed to go or he tried to go for he had not proved it. He didn't know how to use this weaponry. These were natural weapons. These would not be effective for David. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. And look at this. He took his staff in his hand. He chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. You know why he chose five? Because there were four more giants in addition to Goliath. David was so confident in the Lord, he took five stones, one stone per giant. That is how confident he was and put them into a shepherd's bag, which he had even in his script and sling in his hand and drew near to the Philistine. David had weapons which were not naturally mighty, but they were mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And my friend, God has given you weapons. God will give you a divine strategy if you will listen. He'll show you how to wage a debilitating assault against the stronghold that has been controlling you. And then when you come to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God. Mighty, again, is the Greek word dunamis, which pictures explosive superhuman power that comes with enormous energy and produces phenomenal, extraordinary, unparalleled results. And it is the very Greek word which was used to describe the full might and power of an advancing army, which means when you have weapons, when you have the power of God and a divine strategy, you're no longer in retreat. You are in a position to advance and to wage a debilitating assault. Mighty through God, in Greek it says to Theo, through the instrumentality of God or the partnership of God, God literally joins himself to you when you decide to advance to the pulling down of 
strongholds, pulling down, again, the Greek word, which means to take down, to disassemble, if need be, bit by bit, piece by piece, to demolish, destroy, to dismantle, to throw down, knock down, break up, break apart, take to pieces until nothing is left of it standing. That has got to be your commitment. I'm going to assault this thing until I have taken it to pieces. I have dismantled it. And this lie, this lie in my mind and my emotions, it is not going to control me anymore. I'm not going to stop until it is totally dismantled. Then when you come to verse five, Paul adds, casting down imaginations. Casting down is the same word translated pulling down in verse 4, which means again, Paul is repeating this Greek word, which means take it down, pull it down, break it up, break it apart, dismantle it, disassemble it. That has got to be your com commitment. And he calls it now imaginations. He gets very specific. He's talking about lies in the head. You see a stronghold is a lie in your mind. It is a well-defended lie. The devil builds a stronghold in your head and like a tyrant, he moves in and he begins to rule you. He tells you what you're going to think. The devil tells you what you're going to feel, what your emotions are going to tell you, what your future is going to be, what you're never going to be. The devil begins speaking to you. He begins dominating you like a tyrant. He is smothering you, suppressing you, oppressing you. And the Bible calls them here, imaginations. Wow. And he goes on to say every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Every in Greek is the word pan. It describes something that is all encompassing, nothing excluded, which means you have to go for every single little insinuation that is out of line with the truth that God says about you. Every thought. The word high thing is a Greek word which describes a barrier, a bulwark, or a presumptive thought. Every barrier in your mind, everything that says you can't be this, you'll never be that, you're never going to be able to be changed, your marriage will never be different, that is a presumptive thought that is against the knowledge of God. And in fact, the Bible says it is exalting itself. That word exalting is a Greek word which means to wrongfully assert it depicts a haughty, arrogant, prideful way of thinking, asserting itself against the knowledge of God. And as I told you in the previous program, that phrase against the knowledge of God is also so important. The word against is from the Greek word kata. The word kata in this case carries the idea of domination, to squash, to pull something under its control or to completely subdue it. The phrase, the knowledge of God, is from a very long Greek phrase, which means knowledge that originates in God and comes from God. Now, let me tell you, voices are speaking to you all the time. Your parents are speaking to you. Your spouse is speaking to you. You hear the voice of your friends. You hear the voice of media. You hear the voice of politicians. You hear the voice of your church, the voice of your pastor. Voices are just talking to you all the time. You have to be careful about what voices you listen to. But there are two voices, two voices that are really loud. One is the voice of the enemy and one is the voice of God. And guess what? Both of them want your mind because your mind is the central control center of your life. And whoever dominates your mind will build a stronghold there. And from that stronghold will begin to dominate you, your mind, your emotions, your self-image, your entire life, whoever controls your mind has you. Somebody says, well, I gave Jesus my heart. That's good, but you need to give him your mind. He wants your mind and the devil wants your mind. So two voices are speaking to you. One speaks the truth. One speaks that which is against truth. For example, God says, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. That is a knowledge that originates in God and comes from God. The voice of the enemy says, no, you are not. You're not righteous. You don't behave righteous. You have every reason to feel condemned and unworthy. And the voice you listen to will determine what you experience. God says, 
you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. That's knowledge that originates in God. It comes from God. The voice of the enemy tries to exert itself against the knowledge of God, to squash it, to put it down, to pull it under its control. The voice of the devil says, you are not healed. Others may be healed. The Bible may theologically say that you're not, that you're healed, but you're not experiencing that and you never will be healed. It is against the knowledge of God. Whatever God says about you, that is the truth. The devil will oppose it. He will try to squash it. Now, what do you do when the enemy is speaking to you? Well, the Bible tells us. It says, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What does that mean, bringing into captivity? Well, in Greek, it is a very long word which pictures a soldier. Now listen to this. Listen to this. This is so powerful. A soldier who has captured an enemy and leads him into captivity with a point of a sharpened spear thrust into his back. This captive doesn't dare resist, but is silent and submissive and non-resistant. This word means to force into obedience, submission and slavery, to bring under control, to lead into captivity in other words, you have to be very serious about this. You have to say to those wrong thoughts, I'm going to force you into slavery. You're not going to lord yourself over me anymore. I'm going to put a spear into your back. You know, if somebody put a spear into your back, you would go wherever they direct you. And here we have the picture of you taking authority over your thoughts. Rather than being taken captive by your thoughts, you're making the decision. I'm going to shut my ear to the enemy. I'm going to open my ear to the word of God. You've got to decide which voice you're going to hear. You're going to hear God say, you're righteous, you're healed, you're holy. You're going to listen to God and you're going to close your ear to the enemy. And rather than listen to your thoughts, you're going to take them captive you're going to speak to your thoughts. And the verse says, bring them into the obedience of Christ. The word obedience is the Greek word hupakuo. It's a compound of the word hupo, which means under, and it carries the idea of a subservient position. The word akuo is where we get the word acoustics. It means I hear. When you compound the two words together, it pictures one who listens willfully or by force, and who obeys what he hears, either willingly or by pressure. In other words, you say to your thoughts, you're going to listen to the truth, whether you like it or not. Lies, you're not speaking to him anymore. You're going to listen whether you like it or not. You tell the thoughts to shut up and to listen to the truth. The verse says to the obedience of Christ, you bring them to Christ willingly or by pressure, or by compulsion, but you're telling your thoughts, you're not going to dictate to me anymore. Now I'm going to bring you to Christ. And by the way, the word Christ is the Greek word Christos, which is the word for Christ, the anointed one, but it is also the word for the anointing. You've got to submit your mind to the anointing of God and when you inundate your brain, your thinking with the anointing of God, it releases the power of God to begin to free your mind, wash out all the garbage, renew the way that you think, and set you free. But you have to make the decision. I'm not going to listen to my thoughts anymore. I'm going to speak to my thoughts, and I'm going to listen to truth. And I'm going to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. I'm going to drag it into slavery and make it submit to the anointing. And the anointing, my friend, according to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, will remove the burden. It will set you free. We're out of time, but I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you. Do you know anyone with a bad self-image or negative thinking that affects the way they see themselves or how they perform around others? Many people are hostages to lying imaginations that keep them from being all they were meant to be. If you are harassed by inward thoughts and your life feels limited because of voices that speak to you, then pulling down strongholds will help you walk free and become the person you dream to be. Available in digital or physical formats starting at just $10, Pulling Down Strongholds will show you how to cast down the lying imaginations that have controlled your life for too long. In addition to this teaching series, right now you can also purchase the book Dress to Kill. This comprehensive study teaches you how to put on the full armor of God and in it, you'll learn the significance of your God-given spiritual weaponry and how to be prepared every day to defeat the enemy. 
This powerful book can be yours for just $22. Order today to discover how to have victory in life's battles by renewing your mind and finding your identity in Christ. Don't miss this special offer, Pulling Down Strongholds and Dress to Kill. Call now, 1-800-742-5593 or go to renner.org. Call or go online now. My name is Joel Renner, coming to you from Moscow, Russia. I want to say thank you for being a partner with our ministry. It's because of your financial support that we're able to open churches all over our city. Moscow is a beautiful city and one of the oldest cities in Russia. It is very dynamic and is a very large city that is developing all the time. There are many churches in Moscow, but ours is one of the biggest Protestant churches in the city and was opened in the year 2000. And it is called the Moscow Good News Church. But more recently, we opened a new church location in the southwest region of Moscow. Because of this new location, our Moscow Good News Church can serve people who live on the other side of our city. People there need salvation, healing, restoration, and a place they can call their spiritual home. And the Lord has called us to take the gospel to them. Our partners helped us lay the foundation of the Moscow Good News Church and have helped us open multiple churches in Moscow. But we've been working quite some time to open this new location, and now it's done. We thank God for His help and rejoice at everything the Lord has done and is doing in our lives. Because of the support of our generous partners, we are able to open these new locations in our great city. We all have a part to play, and right now, right from your home, you can help us help others by becoming a partner in this work and supporting our work financially. We invite you to become a partner with us to establish believers in the Word of God and take the gospel all over our city. Please call us or go online to renner.org. Through your generous support, we can continue to make a huge difference in people's lives and around the world. The Bible says we have to bring every thought into captivity. That word thought is even important. It is a Greek word, noema. The word noema describes feelings, even insinuations. My friend, the devil's speaking little insinuations to you all the time. Remember, he's a devil. The word devil describes one who repeatedly strikes and strikes and strikes in order to penetrate through his little insinuations. He's trying to penetrate your mind and get an access into the way that you think and the way that you feel so he can dominate you. You've got to bring every thought, every insinuation to the obedience of Christ, which means you have to make a decision to stop listening to your thoughts and you have to start speaking to your thoughts. Close your ear to the enemy and open your ear to God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Whatever you listen to is what you're going to release your faith in. If you listen and listen and listen and listen to the enemy, eventually you're going to believe what he says. But if you close your ear to the enemy and listen and listen and listen and listen and listen to God, you're going to believe what God says, renew your mind, and what God says will become your reality. This is so powerful. By the way, I'm speaking to you from my series called Pulling Down Strongholds. comes with a great study guide. And right now we're offering you my book, which is called Dressed to Kill. But I want to pray for you about those thoughts that have been speaking to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against those thoughts in Jesus' name. Any thought that is against the knowledge of God, any thought that tells my friend that he or she cannot do what God says they can do or they are not what God says they are, I bind it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Word of God is powerful. Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Let it work in you today, and I'll see you tomorrow.